I have a good friend who moved uh, here recently from South Africa. Great guy, other than he supports the wrong rugby team. But other than that, he's a wonderful individual. But we were chatting the other day, and he spoke to me about his experience in moving here, where we're, shall we say, much more egalitarian or uh, ubiquitous relative to we do things for ourselves here. He had gardeners and cooks and maids and all these sorts of things in South Africa, and that would be an interesting experience. But that's what he was used to. That's what he'd grew, grown up with. And so moving here, where we mow our own lawns and do our own things, he was a little bit stuck out in the garden, doing gardening as best he could, and was a little lost as to what was a weed and what was not, and what he should pull out and what he should leave for future reference and wonderful flowers or shrubbery or whatever. And as he was contemplating this and trying to figure it out and thinking I should Googleize these leaves and see which one is good and which one is bad, his wonderful neighbor came along. Elderly woman, she and her husband lived alone, empty nester types, and they had a wonderful garden. So we thought, well, here's an opportunity to get to know my neighbor and visit with her just a little and chat about gardens. He was a little bit anxious because maybe he was, she was coming across to tell him what to do and what not to do because his garden was, by contrast, significantly shabby compared to hers. And the conversation began where he said, well, I'm trying to figure out what I should pull out, what I should leave, what's going to grow into what over the season, etc." How do I do this? And she looked at him and she said, well, if you think it's a weed, then it's a weed and just pull it out. If you like what it looks like now, then more than likely you'll like what it looks like later on and just leave it there. You decide. I think that's wonderful, particularly as it relates to gardening, particularly as it relates to our lives. If there are weeds, in our lives, then, and we see them and we think they and we acknowledge them as a weed, pull them out. If there's something there that we're not quite sure of, let it grow for a bit, let it flourish, let it turn into something, something positive, maybe something not positive, but then pull it out maybe later on when you've had confirmed that it's a weed. It's interesting because the natural state of the world is weeds. If you plow a field and have great intentions of planting corn, that's not going to grow corn for you. You've got to do something with that. If you leave it fallow and let it lay there, it will grow weeds. And by definition, you can then pull them all out because you know they're weeds. It's the natural state. But it's a wonderful thought to process and, and think about and kind of gestate on, if you will. What are, where are, and should I pull out the weeds in my life? Or as one of these little weed-ish type things that I'm not sure, of, not sure of, a little idiosyncrasy, maybe it's not a weed, I don't know. Well, then don't pull it out. Let it grow. Let it turn into something. Adapt it as it goes along such that it becomes a strength rather than a weakness. But if you think it's a weed, then pull it out.